Here are four questions that you need to ask every single NFT founder. Number one, what is your long-term goal five to 10 years? The reason that you ask this question is it makes them think beyond what they've got in their roadmap. Now, a lot of founders will kind of be used to talking about their roadmap and going, oh, here's what we're gonna execute, here's what we're gonna plan, here's what we're gonna do. And you're essentially going, hey, throw that roadmap out of the way. What's the five to 10 year plan? What are you doing there? And this usually catches them off guard. If they haven't thought about it and they're just trying to like rug it or um, kind of soft rug it, or they're not even that skilled, they're not gonna know what they're gonna be doing five or 10 years down the line. Hold up, hold up real quick. Make sure you go down there, hit up the subscribe button. There's a lot of viewers out there that aren't subscribed. Hit it up. Okay, let's kick on. A really well kind of thought out um, knowledgeable founder will have a five to 10 year plan because they've gone into the project with that five to 10 year plan in mind, but they're only used to rehearsing the six month plan because that's what people care about by doing this you can a you're able to read between the lines find out what they actually want to do when it comes down to the project which means that you can then kind of uh, see if it's going to be sort of um, a rug soft rug um, if it's going to be a long-term blue chip that kind of thing because if they've got the right answers and the answers that correspond with what you actually want in a project sort of in five to ten years then you're good an example of something that might not be good if they're like oh five to ten years I don't know the, the NFT space moves too fast we, we don't know we're just going to play it by ear then that's not really good if they're saying something oh in five to ten years time we plan to be a big web3 brand that can actually integrate what we're doing into sort of digital or physical products and roll this out to the mainstream using nft technology something like that if they've got a plan then that's good number two how will the project be monetized or funded? Now, the reason that I ask this question off the back of the five to 10 year plan is it makes them kind of justify how they're actually gonna run the next five or 10 years. So the idea is I'm not looking for a project that is just going to be funded uh, by the treasury. So at the initial mint and just going, oh, we're gonna hold it in ETH and kind of slowly drip it out. What you're looking for here is a project that has plans or ways that they can then kind of monetize what they've got or how they can actually kind of move into it. Now, this may not make sense perfectly for every single project, but by asking this question, it makes them think. And if they've got an answer for it, great. If they don't have an answer, that's not necessarily a red flag straight away, but it shows that you're, you kind of have the foresight to ask the hard questions, the difficult questions. Now, this makes perfect sense when it comes down to a utility um, uh, that isn't necessarily based off art or that kind of thing. Because I think that if you're um, moving into a project and they say that it's gonna be funded completely by the mint and um, they don't really have a way to kind of monetize it and actually kind of continue to kind of generate funding from it using their IP, then that may not be the project that you wanna hold long-term, but um, by all means, it may be worth that short-term flip. Number three, how did the team come together? Now, I really love this. The reason I say, hey, how did the team come together? is so you can then find out how all the pieces connect. Because what you can then do is, you've most likely read their FAQs, you most likely read their website, you know who the team is, and by them saying how they all came together, what you can do is you can find out where they're actually kind of, um, where those touch points are. So were they um, old friends? Did they meet in an old existing project? Um, have they just outsourced the art or are they just outsourcing the dev work? You can find out a lot by going, hey, how did the team come together? The follow on from this is what they usually do is they usually tell you what their backgrounds are because if they say, hey, um, sort of it's me and my friends from school, it's easy to be like, oh, cool, what did you all study together? You can then find out what they studied, what their careers were like before, like sort of previously because you can kind of dive in deep um, from that question. It's very open-ended. It's very, it's a very innocent question, but it can then lead into, and it kind of opens up them to kind of explain and justify how the team came together. Now, this is a very good um, sort of question to use, and I've used a lot to find out how people have come together and then actually work out, hey, is the artist on the payroll? Um, and, and essentially like taking a proper share or was the art outsourced, was the dev outsourced? Like how is it all kind of gelled together? So that is a very powerful question. Number four, have you bought and sold NFTs before? Now I know this sounds like a very, very dumb question, but this is actually, it's really good and well-placed. And I actually usually place it at the start of sort of like asking question. Now the reason that it is a very good question is 90, 99% of them will say, yeah, of course I bought and sold NFTs. What do you mean? 
which then means you can go, oh no, it's fine. I've, I've spoken to um, sort of founders before that haven't even bought or sold NFTs before. You instantly build a rapport and a connection. You've built something tight with them. You can then kind of razz on people that haven't bought or sold NFTs before that may be uh, sort of founders or in the NFT space. If they haven't bought or sold NFTs before, for me, that is a red flag. I step away because I don't think you can run a project without understanding the ecosystem and being in deep and actually how it works. Now, what this also means is it means that they can then um, tell you about the project that they've recently minted, um, what some of their first mints were, what some of their rug pulls are. And first off, it builds a bit of a connection. But the other reason is it lets you know exactly how um, deep in the space they are. If they talk about the gas wars when the sevens happened, you know that they were a sort of, they were around decently in September. If they're talking about sort of hape beast and that kind of running up and all that kind of happening, you know that they're kind of in that December, January period. You can instantly place where they are by talking about, uh, like by finding out where those mints and those projects are that correlate with um, their stories, which means that you can then deep dive. So when a project goes, oh, we've been in the NFT space for ages, we've been in it for months. This is a question that's very innocent um, that can then build the trust because now they trust you because, hey, we're bros, we're friends. We have minted NFTs. We bought NFTs before, we've sold them. Yes, yeah, stuff the other founders that have never done that before. We're friends now, we're friends now. Let's them lower their guard, which means you can then hit them with the harder questions. Now, this may seem very rude and disrespectful, this question to some people, and that's why you can throw in that alternative, which is, hey, so what was uh, one of those most recent mints that you had, or what was one of your kind of first mints uh, or first rugs that you had, which then kind of still gets into the case because you're asking an indirect question, have you bought and sold NFTs before. So the idea here is to pre-qualify them to ensure that they actually have kind of done it before, but then also build that rapport, let them bring down their guard so you can then hit them with these other questions off the back. So those are the four questions that you must ask NFT founders if you're in an AMA. If you found value in this video, please consider hitting up that subscribe button and while you're down there, also hit up the like button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.